afternoon it's my honor and privilege to welcome somebody who's not just an education leader but is a leading industrialist uh, he really runs multiple social enterprises apart from a large education uh, brand and franchise let me welcome mr samir somaya who's the chairman and md of godavari refineries and uh, also he is the chancellor of the somaya vidya vihar university which also has kj somaya as part of it uh, they also own the iconic kitabgar uh, bookshop in bombay which hopefully will be up and running again soon they have a hospital in bombay uh, which has done remarkable work during covid so welcome mr samir somaya uh, kudos to you for doing the kind of work you do first of all i'd like to start by asking uh, how have been the last 10 months for you both personally and professionally we are talking to you under the ages of bw business world dialogue and today is our regular wednesday wisdom uh, for our bw education uh, but before we get into education i'd like to know how have been uh, your last 10 months both personally and professionally so the last two months have been extremely challenging for all of us we've all had to adapt to a new normal as we call it the whole world change upside down in manners that none of us expected as you mentioned we do work in a variety of areas we do work in education healthcare and also in manufacturing and i would say in all cases and we run as you say, a lovely bookshop kitab khana in all these four areas we've had very different challenges i i'd like to explain the challenges in manufacturing first so it you know you have to think about keeping people safe you have to think about the villages and the areas you live in because in the beginning there was a serious worry about um a serious worry about uh safety and people would not want transportation to happen in their uh, villages going in and out of their villages so how do you communicate to neighboring communities that this is not uh, uh this is something to be addressed it is something to be uh, managed how do you keep people safe how do you deal with supply chains how do you deal with logistics how do you deal with keeping customer uh, commitment which they expect from you so i think that was that was a big challenge as we say professionally the second challenge i would say in kitab khana which is our bookshop is uh, for, you know retail was completely closed the full lockdown so how it's anyway challenging uh, to keep a bookshop uh, going commercially uh, it becomes a bigger challenge when you're shut and that's true for large part of the world as we faced it um going one step further in education um uh, you have to have your entire set of teaching faculty adapt to a new way of delivering their knowledge holding attention of their students and delivering uh, value uh, overnight uh, on a medium that they have only used so far socially uh, not shall i say professionally so huge challenges to deal with that thing to be uh, expect normalcy in extraordinary times uh, so that i think was a tremendous challenge and if i would like to put it on top in terms of the healthcare space the you know in many places we talked about work from home how do you deal with work from home for doctors and nurses your ward boys and there is no work for from home for them in fact they are coming as which we call them the front line workers so a real challenge and i would really say that our hospital um rose to the occasion medical college and hospital kj sumaya hospital and we uh, made available 377 beds for covid care and treated more than 4000 people um with creating 74 critical care beds and i think it was a uh, a a great job done by them during these times so professionally i will say these were the challenges personally um personally it has been difficult we had a uh, difficult time uh, you know in the beginning of the covid problem i know many people who got affected by covid people i was close to in my manufacturing uh, location my number 2 there a young 42 year old man passed away because of covid in 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 and then i had somebody my civil engineer who passed away because of covid and and um, and just a month ago my father in law got covid and he passed away so 
it's uh, it's very difficult when you're um, a dealing with COVID in a hospital. You're there to treat a lot of population, making sure beds are available, and then sometimes it strikes home. It's very difficult, and um, I think that's how I would like to say it's been a very difficult, uh, challenging last ten months, professionally uh, and personally. Yeah. I hope and I pray and I'm sure. Uh, the next few months will be better and uh, may God give you strength to deal with what you dealt with uh, but let me focus on the education ecosystem that you lead um, you started, your family started with KJS Pumaya which is among the leading uh, institutions in the business school education and now you have a uh, Pumaya with the Avihar University and you're the chancellor for that uh, tell us what is your vision at the uh, Somaya Vidya Vihar University and what should we expect at the university over the next uh, few years, next three to five years? Uh, give us a sense of what have you achieved at the university till now. So as a uh, Somaya Vidya Vihar was founded in 1959. Um, we started with the KJ Somaya College of Arts and Science. Uh, these were institutions that were then um, affiliated to Mumbai University. And with the passage of time, uh, various institutions came up, whether it was a college of uh, diploma in education, whether it was a polytechnic, whether it was a college of science, uh, later engineering, management, and various such institutions that came up in time. I personally studied in uh, Cornell University in the US. I studied there my chemical engineering masters and also an MBA, and later I did a public administration degree at Harvard. And I was always fascinated by the uh, intellectual freedom uh, and the ability of choice of being able to take different courses. So I may have majored in chemical engineering, but I took courses in ethics, I took courses in Indian meditation texts, I took in history. And I, and I also realized that faculty could create courses as they would um, like they could create content that was relevant to their times it would move with the times i also teach at cornell even now i teach in chemical engineering and i see the freedom that i have as a faculty there to change the course every time i teach it so when i took charge of sumai vidya vihar which was in january 2010 i realized that these academic freedoms uh, were not there uh, we had to do we were essentially transmitting a particular knowledge created by a university uh, and that was the model. So the first thing I wanted to do was create our institutions into autonomous colleges where you had some freedom. And then we really wanted to become a university. A university gives us tremendous freedom uh, to create course content in a manner in which we are exposed to when we go overseas to study. So today, Sumaya Vidya University is one year old, but we have created a system where students who are doing engineering can take courses in the humanities they can take a course in Hindi if they would like. They can do another double major. They can, you can do a computer science major. You can also do a minor in electronics. You can do a minor in business management. You can study Gujarati, you can study Hindi, you can study Tibetan. So I think that's the kind of richness and tapestry that we would like to provide to our university as we go along. So it is a, a becoming a university in the times, any time is a, is a challenge. Becoming a university in times of a pandemic is a still greater challenge and so uh, this is what we seek to do and um, you know my grandfather had put a challenge to me when i went to cornell to study 30 years ago uh, 35 years ago that uh, you know try and when you come back make sure this university is one in which if you had a student like yourself you would apply to so that's the dream and that's the promise beautiful um mr somaya i have dealt with you i met you briefly a couple of years back at a Entrepreneurship Summit at I am Ahmedabad, the Thai annual event uh, in Ahmedabad. And since then, even then, I liked your ideas. I don't intend to patronize you, but uh, the clarity and the authenticity and the humility that came across uh, left an impression on me. I have to say that. And I'm delighted that I'm doing this conversation with you. Uh, now, the advantage of you running an educational institution is, of course, your background, your own education your exposure, but also the fact that you run the part of industry. Uh, you know, uh, you're a leading player in the uh, biorefineries business. Uh, you understand what is sustainability. You understand what the needs of the uh, 
various disciplines and domains are tell us uh, let me focus a bit on the kg somaya tell us what has uh, changed in business education uh, which has kept in pace with what has changed in business so is business education changing fast enough well i i think uh, let's talk about as you said business education i just like to give you an example of our own uh, uh, you know the whole digital transition has happened uh, a few years ago and in this last one year the transition to digital has accelerated now in our uh, university you have what is called the adcom committee which is the admissions committee now the entire social media campaign uh for the admissions is run by a student team of 60 students with faculty supervision great way to get them experience exposure responsibility yeah. beautiful I, i don't think this kind of exposure is something you know you run a whatsapp event you run this event you're trying to respond to students so this kind of uh, exposure of uh, teaching in real time um and it's it's not even a it's not even a pilot test it's a full fledged you know swimming in the water test so i think this is the kind of exposure that you need students to get and then that's what we're giving beautiful i remember uh, i was at a business school called mdi uh, yes. and you know i was part of the placement uh, committee yes. i was part of uh, the industry interaction cell and that did help me in becoming who i have become i mean with all humility i am on the board of governors of mdi i am an aict nominee and i'm also the chairman of the alumni but trust me these real life skills that you learn on the campus apart from the education that you get help so kudos to you for doing that now right at the start you talked about how the you know teachers the faculty need to adapt to the new way of imparting education because you said you know education is not just talking to the camera it's much more than that so how what have you done in your educational institutions in terms of retuning teachers and faculty to this new way of being you know uh, firstly the entire credit for this transformation goes to the teachers themselves and their leaders uh, which means the heads of each relevant institution let's go back 10 months so zoom was not what we call it as a common uh, word that we do today uh, you suddenly had to decide that you're going to teach a course on zoom so you had to have an it team your you know my it team had to sit and work with all the institutions and the teachers to explain to them well this is microsoft teams this is zoom this is google meet uh, these are the various platforms and then how much time are you really giving the faculty to adapt to start teaching tomorrow one day two days three days I, you know so so you you um, so i think what we would if you you had some teachers who did a remarkable job transitioning so they themselves then tried to explain to other teachers other faculty what is to be done so i would like to say that we and then you know some teachers don't have bandwidth some teachers don't have electronic Uh, because we do a wide range of education it's not just management education engineering education humanity schools so you want to enable your um, teachers uh, whether they have the bandwidth whether they you know at home whether they have one computer for them all the time whether you need to make resources available to them so i think we created an enabling mechanism uh, to do the transition and provide them guidance but the full credit for the transition goes to them fantastic uh you know i i would have asked this question a little later late but uh, you know there is dr anand bodhale uh, who's made a comment uh, he says good evening sir i am dr anand bodhale a faculty member from the kj somaya college of engineering at the vidya vihar i take pride in being associated with somaya family it gives me a lot of satisfaction to be working with the somaya college and team what helps you go through each day of your life what is your driving force for the life uh, you are living and you know what you want to live So I thought it was a very relevant question. I'll steal it from him and ask you: What drives you? What's your purpose, uh, Mr. Samir Somaya? Well, I, I like to answer that in two uh, two replies. Um, one is uh, I like to do yoga in the morning. Uh, I normally do it uh, when the uh, dawn breaks. So when the dawn breaks, you see night turn into day, uh, and I think every time I see that happening. I get filled with wonder the wonder of life uh, that we are alive 
uh, when you wake, when you pass through that moment and wake up a little later i think you miss that sense of awe and wonder ki you know we are alive and the second that's why mr somaya some people go to sleep after uh, the sun rises <laughs> not you and me but other people <laughs> the the second thing is um, you know whether i look at our bio refining business or i look at education and healthcare i think we want to uh, make the world a better place more sustainable place uh, more renewable and in education and healthcare i'm very driven and in and in the bio refinery that indian institutions should be recognized as the best in the world and we have to work towards them i think for too long we have and i think there is a you know i myself i'm a product of american higher education i think there's so much to learn from them and they are incredible institutions but i think that we have to grow into our own such that we become world class and so my 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 dream is to create world class institutions whether it's of education healthcare uh, a, a lovely bookshop uh, which is my wife and i we run kitab khana which is how do you place it's a bookshop is a place for ideas uh, and when we had the fire a month ago the kind of support we got from the community whether it was the local policeman whether it was a 12 year old girl who wrote to my wife uh, whether it is uh, you know any who just says that you know come back on can we crowd fund you to come back on Uh, and by refining can you create a world in which you farm sustainably you process sustainably you create products that are sustainable and it's a circular economy and and the world is better place so i think that's what i i, I really Absolutely. would like to see fantastic you know there is another comment from someone he is he's just endorsing uh, pravin shake is saying he walks the talk he's an asp- absolute inspiration to all of us and uh, you know coming back to education again um, let me ask you that uh, uh, the new national education policy uh, was unveiled during the last few weeks right. now months and it is very comprehensive and in its intent and direction is super related uh, now tell us uh, it talks of you know open courses in the sense you can take a one course at kj somaya and then you can go and complete another credit course you know so you add up credits and it talks of interoperability as we would talk in the it terms right it talks of uh, vocational education it talks of skills it talks of grooming it talks of employability uh, so give us a sense of uh, what are your priorities when you look at the n- new national education policy what are uh, some of the things that are there you were subconsciously doing earlier but what are the things that you've taken a cue from the uh national education policy and accelerated within your educational institution no sir i um, i'd like to think that um, a lot of the things we are doing are reflected in the national education policy um, so that's a wonderful thing and the second thing is when the regulatory framework is in line with what you want to do it makes your job a lot easier um so for example when we became the university in um, Uh, late 2019 we wanted to create this sort of credit banks interoperability can a student of engineering study tibetan can a start a student of uh, psychology study uh, mathematics and so we we are we actually um, we are actually designing that that a student can have the opportunity to do this so when the national education policy allowed for this or it it never disallowed it but when it spoke about it so openly and strongly it makes your job of doing that a lot easier they talk about vocational so for example we run a center for uh, uh, you know work in in kutch where we talk about ajrak printing this bandhni this is stunning work done by uh, artisans where we teach them design but today we find that uh, people who do this kind of artisanal work are kept at different standard than people who for example study a b e in engineering which are my parents you know i think and so what this national education policy does it puts them on an equal footing in an equal framework how you integrate that and implement that in your education is one thing but once again the articulation that you know these things need to be given status i think is a very welcome step because we've been feeling this a lot in the work we do in kutch and like
likewise they talked about uh, indian language i also think indian languages need to be promoted for various reasons one is for access so we run eight schools of the eight schools five schools are taught in kannada gujarati and marathi so there are brilliant students in all these schools i think you need to enable students to come into your higher education system and not be closed out because of uh, inability to know english for example uh, you need to create an inclusive system so that's one secondly i think languages need to be also there to preserve the culture you've had and third to grow um, as in most countries in the world whether it is japan china norway uh, germany you look at the knowledge that their language systems also growing so i think that's the way i uh, i i think that the articulation of the policy helps us advance what we think is a good agenda and in the way we were thinking and you know they they have talked about one regulator in the national education policy today we have so many regulators one regulator would make it easier for us and the best universities in the world are integrated um, there is no reason why uh, we shouldn't go in that direction beautiful so you really clearly believe that uh, integrated universities are the way forward and it brings me to my logical question that you know in india you rightly said the liberal arts when you use that term have found its way or will find its place going forward now uh, it shouldn't be never either or you know in anything especially when it comes to this quest of knowledge you know uh, hopefully it be deeper and integrated now tell me uh, one of the reasons uh, we haven't learned as well even in the field of science in terms of you know building a product company or being innovative i mean we are a innovative nation we are we do frugal innovation uh, we are able to produce lots of products and services at price points which nobody in the world can do so clearly we are very very innovative but to productize something to be able to build scale on that product we haven't done and some of it is possibly because of the fact that we only celebrate success we do not celebrate failure when you talk to liberal arts there are lots of shades of gray there's nothing called failure it's experimentation so do you think liberal arts education needs to take a stronger ground in india and do you think that will improve the overall fabric of what happens in the society including at work places you talked about two two different things uh, all together i like to address them both uh, i think education has to be holistic education has to touch your soul um, you know uh, agar aap shehar e shayari sunte ho sangeet sunte ho uh, you, you know what makes your life worth uh, you know what makes you smile at the end of the day um, and i i think your education should inculcate an appreciation for that aesthetic whether it is the lived space the built space or the cultural space or the thinking space uh, we education must not be reduced to a utilitarian approach okay, why am i doing what is it how is it going to be good for me uh, and related or reduced to material terms i think education should be liberal means why, what is liberal education that one liberates you from your narrow mindedness or from the shall i say the Uh, difficulties of normal life so you need and that in that sense liberal education should apply to everything you want education that liberates you um we we uh, and, and so i think we have to provide that exposure to our students um to to develop that cultural aesthetic and that's what you know you're today seeing a lot of the world around you you know whether it's the gardens whether it's the building whether it's the architecture whether it's the music i think that's what needs to be there and i think the second question you asked is why are we not being able to make products i think we just you know i think we just have to first imagine that we can and in the last 20 30 years you've seen various industries in india in various spaces that have built uh, names across the globe um, so i think we just need to have a group of either youngsters or large corporations who can keep imagining that they they will they will do that they will be there and i think it can be done we had a uh, we had a, a students who created in our incubator a, a nice chess board called square off uh, which got the best school tech award in ces uh, last week it's four years ago uh, so they imagined they did it so i think you know you you got to you got to imagine you'll be there you know you're a person of science i mean 
you run a biorefinery company, you studied at two of the most venerable educational institutions in the world. Uh, now, recently, uh, there's been a lot of chatter about the quality of vaccines from India. A lot of people are skeptical. Now, what is your personal view? Uh, and what would you say to people who are on this broadcast? I, I actually don't know enough about uh, the science behind the vaccines that have been rolled out. I'm only assuming that people who have authorized their use would have done full homework uh, and are interested in protecting their people, our, us, all of us. And if I, I have, have no doubt. I have no and doubt. So my point is very simple. Uh, if my turn comes in online to take either of the two vaccines, I will put my arm out and take. I would have the same view because I the biggest criticism has been that the phase three trials haven't been long enough. You know, it, but the fact is we are living in very unprecedented times, emergency times. So we had to hasten up. So you have to contextualize why something has been done. You know, understand the why behind before you ask a question. And it's fair to ask a question. There's nothing wrong with it. If you if you look at any medicine development, the process takes many years. Now you had any and every vaccine that has come out in the last uh, 12 months, uh, which has obviously gone through only five or six months, um, and so everybody has had to accelerate that process. Absolutely. Uh, and there is a crisis around us, and uh, we are uh, we hope that as you know as, as, you, as you said, and as I am saying, that uh, the people who are releasing the vaccine have the best interest of the population at heart. Absolutely. Uh, now coming to. Uh, I want to ask you my last question on education before I ask you two more questions and my colleague or we will ask you one question uh, you know when it comes to education um, what are your milestones that you wish to achieve for the Somaya Vidya Vyar University over the next 5-10 years I'm talking a little long term I'm not talking immediate uh, what would like you like to see, see happen to this uh, you know, baby that you nurtured for so long and this university that is really in some way fulfilling your dream of providing the kind of education universities provide abroad. Firstly, we'd like the pandemic to go away. Um, uh, I was on the campus yesterday and without students, the Hindi word for it is Suna Lakta. Uh, bilkul, bilkul. So we want, uh, we, you know, it's, uh, we want the students back on campus. The, the campus is alive because of the students. So um, it's, a, it's, a, so the, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's just a desire that the pandemic should go away as soon as possible, and we can have the students back. Um, talk, but the pandemic has also taught us different things. Uh, it's taught us that we can teach online. Now that gives us tremendous flexibility. In some of our courses, we teach courses on Pali, we teach courses in um, you know, various courses. We have students who signed up from, say, uh, Berlin, New Jersey, and even New Zealand, besides, of course, being in India. Uh, we would like the ability to continue that post-pandemic so that we become a global university uh, which has learned and adapted in these current times. Uh, so that is what we want. The third thing is, we really think that we need to integrate medical education and other educations, agriculture educations, because today, if you look at what are the challenges facing us, we have climate change facing us. Climate change affects agriculture, climate change affects health, climate change affects uh, everything uh, and, it, and public health. So I think if you truly want to look at the world, you need to be a research university, looking at the things that are affecting you. And you need to, I'm not saying that every university has to be uh, a, a multi-pronged university. Somebody may choose to be extremely specialized. Our vision of Somaya Vidya Vihar is to be a multi-pronged university, which looks into the traditional aspects, the current aspects, it looks into the performing arts, it looks into medicine, it looks into climate change, public health, management, and all of that. So this is this is what we want to create the platform to build. And I'm very fond of sports. We've created a very nice sports program. Um, I can't imagine a world with the like without music or without sports. So we need that in our institution. Okay, great. Uh, now let me ask you uh, two questions before I take the two audience questions. Uh, one is, you know, in your biorefinery business, 
you have uh, you have really built a large player consciously and subconsciously uh, you have focused a lot on sustainability and the sustainability sustainability outcomes have been impressive give us a sense of the why world needs more sustainable practices uh, and how do we kind of create a circular economy that really contributes to the planet being more healthy so to say okay so i can give you this by means of an example so if i buy sugarcane from a typical farmer he will be growing sugarcane single crop he will be putting in chemical fertilizers and pesticides you get the sugarcane uh, you process it convert it into sugar and uh, that's your business um, i love sugar so i am not here trying to say anything i i cannot imagine life without a gulab jamun or a piece of chocolate so i am here um uh, talking up sugar but i'll just give an alternate model so when we speak to farmers and we look at other techniques we look at for example multi cropping so suppose you had a sugarcane field altered crop geometry such that you would put soya in the middle now what have you done you have fixed nitrogen from the atmosphere and so you've reduced the need for chemical urea to be added so you've created two income streams for the farmer and you've reduced the cost on the farmer and at the same time you have also kept the soil healthier for the next cycle we are working with farmers to see how we can use their own products on the soil what is panchagavya which comes five things from a from a cow for example with drip farming multi crops and then what you're really seeing is tremendously lower use of chemical pesticides or fertilizers twinning incomes for the farmers a healthier soil for the future now when you come into the facility you we 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 convert the sugarcane into sugar ethanol electricity biomaterials and biochemicals and pharmaceutical intermediates and even fertilizers back to the soil we're thinking of now extracting potash from the waste which goes back into the soil so you suddenly create biomaterials you create biofuels you could have an electric uh, car system running on electricity run by um, say produced in sugarcane farms with biofuels taking them the longer distance and the whole thing being carbon neutral because the carbon dioxide is sucked by the sugarcane and if you do drip farming you reduce the water footprint so i right. think the world has to think for each business how it can be more sustainable and socially so environmentally so and financially so fantastic uh, we are about 10 days away from the budget the finance minister has promised us a budget like never before uh, rightly so i also believe that this decade is a decade of india i think over the next few years india will grow to a level where we'll make up multiple times we have a large probability of in 5 years being a 5 trillion economy hopefully being a 9 10 trillion dollar economy by 2030 we have a very good possibility of course it depends on policy intervention it's on the ambition of the indian entrepreneur which does exist in the prime minister has kind of stroked it by giving this atmanirbhar slogan so what are your expectations from the budget if at all for uh, the economy for the various sectors that you are in what can the finance minister do to take away the pain of last 10 months and create an enabling framework for future i think for the future i would like the you know i think the government has already done a great push on biofuels uh, on ethanol i think if they further pushed by giving some benefit to what they call 2g fuels which is second generation cellulosic fuels from biomass or what we call biochemicals from biomass i think this would india is abundant in biomass as a resource and it must rather than burning these away and causing pollution type of issues it's much better to look at uh what is perceived to be a problem to be a tremendous asset to meet the needs of the country so the the government has done very good policies in the last few years to advance this biofuel agenda i think if they do more to enable valorization of second generation biofuels or biochemicals that would be a great thing um the last uh well secondly they can also do they are also doing very good work in helping work in incubation we have a very nice incubator called riddle uh and we are seeing riddle 
it is about yeah. solving the riddles so <laughs> yeah, so we played on that but we spell it r double i d l but yes there mm-hmm. was a desire to uh, to play on the word and we see great support from byrac and from bst uh, to help uh, seed startups and take them forward i think uh, this um, this can only help going forward i think the government has talked in the new education philosophy uh, policy of a national research foundation if they if they vest that national research foundation with funds which then uh, are spread further into education institutions healthcare institutions industry to solve the real problems of today and the ones of tomorrow i think that would be a, a great thing finally a lot of families have faced a lot of difficulty in the last 12 months um, i think it is for the government to best judge how they can alleviate some of that uh, that's how i would put it fantastic uh urvi you'd like to ask us a somaya question urvi by the way covers such energy and sustainability for us so that's why i asked her to do Hi, Urvi. Hello, sir. Good evening. How are you? Hi, Urvi. Uh, sir, I wanted to ask you that uh, the Indian education system is primarily focused on grades and marks, and we do not uh, give enough weightage to say emotional quotient or uh, people skills or innovation, the value of which we've realized in the last one year. Yeah. What lessons do you think our educational institutions should take from the pandemic gone by, or should I say it's still there? Ah. Uh, for you know i think firstly the pandemic is still there the reason why we wanted to become so i as i mentioned i teach at cornell university uh, when i teach at cornell university i have tremendous freedom in being able to state in advance what the content will be and how it will be evaluated um i think that kind of freedom needs to be given uh, so let's take the pandemic itself uh, uh, you know we would like such situations to happen only once in a century but in this situation you have a uh, what i will say a uh, learning moment uh, personally or professionally how do you deal with these learning moments can you convert them into a classroom method if it was harvard they would have created into a harvard case study uh, and how do you deal with policy negotiation so i think this is the freedom we seek to create in 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 and only after having become a university you can imagine that i'll teach a course on dealing with the pandemic and then create course content that will have real life case studies and you could have real life people coming in and discussing how they dealt with the particular situation so i don't know if i answered your question but the fundamental point was becoming a university enables us to do this where i'm not a university and parts of my education system are still not i cannot do that and it's a thank you so much Yes, perfect. By the way, uh, Urvi does outstanding work for us. She's a prolific writer, and um, you know she gets it. And she does an outstanding job in a short period that she has worked with me. She earned my respect, uh, and uh, I'm glad she asked this question. There are lots of questions and two comments. First, I'll take the question. Listen, uh, Vakla is saying one of the best conversations with Samir Somaya sir. Uh, Bipin Upadhyay is saying Samir sir, your thoughts are very impressive and innovative. I have just recently joined the KJ Somaya Medical College. Uh, the interactions we've had with you have been really inspiring, and I expect that we can together develop a world-class medical and allied institute. Uh, I would definitely love to be part of a world-class institute. Uh, Katan Shah, there is a, I think it's a boy, but if it's a girl, uh, pardon me, whoever you are, Katan. Uh, hello, sir. I am a student of KJ SAC. What features do you believe that the new education policy have? may miss to address so is there something else that is lacking uh, let mr somaya answer and i'll give then mr dr nagaraj rao is asking how to cope up with totally uh, how to understand online teaching how to cope up uh, by understanding what is needed in online teaching particularly if you are in countryside where they may not have technological equipments where the connectivity may be low or the devices may not be there the two separate questions one from a student katan Thing, what is missing in the new education policy? So, just very quickly to Bipin Upadhyay, where he talks about building a world-class institute. I think it's all about sharing dreams, and if you can share each other's dreams, you have a very powerful approach to go forward. You know, I think that's one plus one equals eleven when people can share their dreams because it's a dream that motivates them. 
uh, when it comes to Dr. Nagraj Rao, I think the problem is not only in the countryside, it's also in the city. We had some students in our schools where there's only one electronic device at home, let's say a mobile phone, which either the mother or the father has during the day and the child only accesses it in the evening. I think this is a real challenge and you know, it can't be wished away. The best thing is to hope normalcy. So, you know, you cannot imagine online teaching to be a sustainable force for the country. We are not a, you know, so this is, um, you, we have to, um, otherwise we'll have to innovate with different models. And Pratham, um, you know, I, I don't have an answer to your question, what has it uh, missed to address? I'll have to reflect on that. And uh, if I may, Mr. Somaya, bear you out on this one. I sorry. think the education policy is extremely comprehensive. I think in my, I read the policy, it has covered almost everything I can think of. You know, it has addressed interoperability and flexibility in taking courses. It has addressed the holistic nature of education, which you've been talking about. It has, you know, it has addressed what should the uh, teachers be doing in terms of upgradation. So it is very comprehensive, I don't think. Now it's about, it's a policy document, it's about intent, it's about execution. It's in some things that, you know, will will be compliance oriented or mandatory, but a lot of it is directional. It is up to educational institutions to be able to adopt it as fast as they can. Even if you did most parts of it, I think it will create a significant better experience for students and all the stakeholders of the education ecosystem. Yes, I, I, so I think the challenge will be whatever areas we can take up, how, how can we be enabled to implement it? That's what I would say. How are we enabled? Uh, all these situations, so Maya Vidya, we are give a lot of importance to value education. So it's not only about grades, marks. That's what uh, Chitra has added. I thought I must bring it to Urmi and I'll the audience. Come to campus, uh, both of you, Urmi. Uh, we'll, uh, next time I'm in Bombay, I'll definitely uh, take you up on that. So and you may want to now, uh, you know, I want, may want to ask you the last question before I let you go. Mr. Uh, Samir Somaya, what have been your top lockdown lessons? What have you learned in lockdown uh, that will help you um, kind of do better with your goals uh, and help you kind of thrive in the new abnormal? normal? Thrive doesn't mean necessarily commercial term. I'm talking of as an individual, uh, as a leader. I think to live in the moment um, and to uh, make the world uh, more, you know, for whatever little you can do, make it a little more beautiful uh, and help others to do so. Um, and I think the pandemic has shown us the fragility of uh, what we take for granted and the value of life we have. So I think uh, live in the moment and also uh, make, try to make uh, life a little more beautiful. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Somaya. It's been a pleasure talking to you. We look forward to doing another conversation with you on business economy, sustainability, and biorefineries and what's happening. You know, the Prime Minister has a dream of, uh, you know, uh, farm to fork. And, you know, again, the agricultural infrastructure, storage, transportation, cold storages, uh, the complete value chain, warehousing, all needs to improve. So maybe another time we'll talk to you about all that but it's been a pleasure talking to you we're grateful to you for what you do for this society and the values that you stand for we wish you luck and i look forward to hopefully uh, visiting uh kitab uh, mahal soon kitab khana soon and uh, i am a regular visitor to bookstores uh, and uh, come to your venerable institutions in bombay i've never been there so i'll take you up on this offer next time thank you for your insights and inputs look forward to a conversation soon thank you god bless you